Hey, thanks so much for clicking on this video and welcome to the haves and the have nots review here on YouTube. If you're a fan of Tyler Perry, you've come to the right place. Be sure to click that subscribe button as well as the bell notification icon. That way you don't miss out on any new content on the channel. And also check me out on these social media platforms and links in the description below will lead you to my Twitter, Instagram, Facebook group, and Facebook page. Once again, thanks for joining in and enjoy the video. All right, have and have not fans, uh, once again, welcome to the channel. And this is another Derek and Candace related video. Now, my video I posted around, good Lord, probably 4 a.m. this morning called Confirm Derek is Candace's father. Um, For the most, believe it or not, for the most part, I've been getting mostly positive reviews on the video. The only people that were like, wait, what? Where people who were like confirmed by who or this is just clickbait. Let me just say is this much as a person who is recognized within the haves and the have not community as one of the go to people for information. I will admit that confirmed in all caps was a bit irresponsible of me in terms of I didn't have the official facts. So I will apologize for that. And just to say that it was not intended to be clickbait. I know that's not enough to persuade people that it isn't clickbait, but I laid down a very solid argument, at least in my thoughts. And at the very end of the video, if you wait until like the uh, end screens pop up where you see links to click on other videos, I posted four other videos about the whole Derek and Candace theory, like uh, Derek being Jeffrey's father, a theory. Uh, the one I did that Derek is Candace's father, question point, exclamation point. Um, is Derek the man with the lion tattoo? And I think I even posted that theory about, um, Derek, oh, excuse me, David being Candace's father. And those are theories, but I just felt that with that piece of evidence, I figured out last night between the scenes of, you know, David and Hannah crying during prayer and then Derek and Hannah crying during prayer that really did in my in my mind so you might say oh it's head canon it's just another theory it's not confirmation you're absolutely right because it hasn't been officially confirmed but i feel like with all the evidence it is right there now that's not to say tyler perry won't pull the rug from underneath me i could be 100 percent off the mark looking at clues that aren't really there i'm not going to lie i've done it before so i just wanted to say up front that that video was not meant to be clickbait and i know you probably feel that way because confirmed and whatnot but that's not my intention my intention is to never mislead or misinform you or or what's the phrase purposefully misinform you because that's not what i'm here for but just know that i do feel now that he is 100 percent the father now talking with my mom because she gave me a phone call today and uh, was like, I saw the video. It was great, but you forgot one thing. And I'm like, what's that? She's like, the fact that Hannah said she would never forget the look of the man's eyes that raped her, a.k.a. the man with the lion tattoo, a.k.a. Candace's father. I said, can you let me have this moment? But even she was like, you know what? It probably was, Derek. And she's like, well, you know what? You tweeted this to Tyler Perry, which I did. And she's like, well, you know what? There's no telling if this has happened in the past where when you're doing your blog or when your videos are taken off that Tyler Perry rewrote the script because you figured it out before anyone else. I'm like, yeah, that is a possibility. But now I know that he films this stuff like a year in advance. So unless he secretly rewrote some scripts and called people back in for reshoots, I want to say that my theories are sometimes on the nose, so there's that. But running with the whole eye theory, I need to give a shout out to um, Shannon Sharon Renee on Twitter. We actually had a brief discussion um, on Twitter, and she was like, you know what? Your mom was right about the eye theory, but, and this is why the title of the video is about Derek's demons. Keep in mind that when you really think about it, look back at the last episode, The Black Man, at that one scene everybody is still talking about. When Candace exposed the demon within her when she was talking with Hannah, she came in all nice and friendly going mama and you could just look at her face. She was trying to portray a kind, caring and gentle person. But when she bent, you know, kind of hunched over those eyes, that face completely changed. And I'm like, are you saying? And then she went on to say, 
if Derek really was the man with the lion tattoo, that means that in a way, just like Candace, he has some inner demons within himself. But as life went on and he became a Christian, went to church, he's a deacon now, and found God, he had that earth-shattering, life-shaking experience that made him change his life around for the better. His demeanor changed and those demons were gone because usually you can tell by a person's eyes. So the way his eyes and facial expressions are now might be a complete contrast to how he was during the days of his past life. Allegedly, the man that raped Hannah. And I said, that is fantastic. And it clicked in my head. And I went back to rewatch the episodes just now. Not the full episodes, but just the scenes between... Um, uh, I could be wrong, but I know for sure the episode I'm going to be referencing is season three, A Talk with Jim. This is right in the heat of Amanda's murder. The criers are mourning. They're in the midst of getting ready for the funeral. And remember how I said and how I've been saying that the whole Candace money plot is annoying? Going back to season three, I remember how annoyed I was at Candace because she wanted to go over to Jim's house to pay her condolences i'm like bullshit and this was at the time where oscar had just been introduced or was about to be introduced um david was working on his plan to get the money back and then maggie this was when she orchestrated a plan to um pretend that there was an office at one of the um like the legal systems off it was like what was that episode candace young esquire Basically, when she was pretending to be working at a law firm to fool Benny. And, you know, Benny at this point was convinced that she had gone straight. That, you know, she passed the bar. Somebody saw her like her boss and was impressed. And all of a sudden she got an office at this impressive law firm and everything. Remember, like this legit happened. Go back and watch it. And if I'm not mistaken, Hulu probably has it listed under season two instead of season three. But that's not the point of this video. The reason um, uh, Sharon's tweet spoke to me about how Derek probably, after changing his life, lost that evil look in his eye that Candace has, that, that like dark, cold, evil look. And I'm like, that reminded me of what Hannah was talking to Benny about. Uh, basically, just to set the scene, season three, after Amanda died, this was after the cops had, uh, what was it? Um, Jeffrey, Veronica, David, Catherine, Jim, Wyatt, Celine, Hannah, and I think Melissa ended up showing up. All of them were in the living room, and it was like a 12... If you watched the movie 12 Angry Men, it really reminded me of that scene. Everyone's going around talking for the most part. Catherine's going on about how she met Jim and how it's a curse. She drug Celine out of the house by her hair and things like that. And after the police finished their investigation and whatnot, everyone was free to go. And I think even Jennifer Salison was there. They took Amanda's body down from the room and everything. And... I think Hannah was torn up by this. And after seeing everything that went down between the criers and their child, she asked Benny to drive her over to the hotel to talk with Candace. And at this point, this was when Can uh, Hannah revealed the story about why she believes Candace hates her so much and talks about how one of her male interests, I guess you could say boyfriends or basically a guy she was with at the time who she later told Benny was like a mean, cruel person and nasty person ended up touching and molesting Candace. And then on the drive, and basically this was pretty much because look, I saw what happened with Amanda and I don't want the same thing to happen to you because you're going down this destructive path. And I'll never forget that's when she hugged Candace and was saying, I love you. And Candace pretty much like you need to go. And she broke down Really reminiscent of the scene in um, The Lion Tattoo. I think that was the episode where Hannah talks about Candace's father. And once again, Candace kicked him out of the room. And then she ended up crying. What I'm talking about here is on the drive home. Benny once again is convinced that Candace had gone straight. And remember, his heart got broken when he found out about Candace extorting the money from Jim. Then ended up losing the tow company and the house. Which is weird because in the recent episode... He told Candace that I never had my heart broken before, yet this is like the fifth time she's deceived you in this series. Anyway, on the drive home, Benny and Hannah are talking. Hannah's just like two through because she's she re understandably had one hell of a day from waking up, going to work, finding a dead body in the bed, 
calling the cops, watching Catherine have a meltdown, watching Jim have a meltdown, the infighting within the family. And yeah, she's ha- and then t- uh, revealing the truth about what really happened with Candace and Candace not believing her, even though she, well, knows it's true, but she doesn't want to accept it. Kind of like how she broke down after Hannah told her about her father. Yeah, she understandably had a long day, but on the drive back, that's when Benny found out about, you know, wait, 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 wait. So you said that you and Candace were in court over me with Mr. Um, Watson, Tony, his father. This was during him learning about how Tony wanted him off life support, even though it was never brought up about the kidney thing, even when Benny brought Tony over to the house. But, you know, and um, the one thing that resonated with me was the fact that Hannah was still not convinced that Candace had changed for the better. And she was like, are you telling me that in one week's time, she ended up staying in a hotel where it's $400 a night. And you're saying that she passed the bar and you're saying that she works in this legit office. And Benny was like, ma, she's gone straight. Then flip to the next morning at towards the end of the episode. That's when, um, and remember this was when Erica was first introduced and sold Benny a car for $500 she said that her ex boy, well, her ex fiance or boyfriend or whatever was with somebody else and she wanted the car gone. And instead of being towed, she's like, get rid of it, get rid of it. So for $500, Benny got the car. And um, after getting the car, she he wants to give it to Hannah, who is convinced that it's not gotten through, well, good, good gains. And even though it was annoying at first, she actually did realize that, did you get this car from Candace? And then later on, we find out that Candace did buy the car to give to um, Hannah because she knew Hannah would never accept the car from her directly because, well, Hannah was right. It was a car gotten through stolen money. Now, and look, look, before I go any further, I'm not making this video to ramble. Just like my video about Derek is Candace's father. I need to tell you all the details so you can understand where I'm coming from. Now, towards the end of the scene, before Hannah goes to work in the car, her and Benny are talking once again about how she isn't convinced that Candace has gone straight. And uh, if you really go back and look through those episodes, it's understandable how some characters just didn't like Hannah. Because to be honest, she, for lack of a better phrase, for the most part, really seem to assume and think the worst about Candace, but the proof is in the pudding. So she even told Benny the best way to judge a person's future accent, action, the, the, the best um, way to see a person's futures, future actions or to predict what they're going to do is to look at their past. That's very true, but I feel like that's hypocritical at the same time because you're literally damning someone with a damaged past. Like, if you can't look past your past, (laughs) then you really can't judge them for their future because for all you know, they might change. But she did say something that really resonated with me about how your sister only knows how to hustle. And then for a person like that to ever change their ways, it has to be something miraculous. It has to be something big to change their life around. Benny was like, what's that? has to be church, faith, God. And your sister really hasn't had any of that experience yet. So because of that, that's why Hannah pretty much said that that's why she doesn't believe that Candace had changed her ways, which she was 100% right. But as a viewer, well, as Benny, who is overly optimistic and trusting of Candace, and remember, this is season three, folks, not to say that he's not the same way now. And this is after the coming off life support after the coma. So Benny really isn't the same mental person he was in season one, even though back then he still trusted Candace because in that scene, Hannah even brings up the fact about the whole mortgage situation. So I was disappointed because when Sharon sent me that tweet about the whole I theory, I thought that in that episode, a talk with Jim, that Hannah said that she can look in her eyes and tell that there hasn't been a difference. She may have said that in another episode that I don't recall, but it sounds like a very sound theory because when you look at Derek's past, then it is possible that just like Candace with her demons now, something miraculous in his life happened and he changed for the better. Now, one could assume that perhaps this was him being in jail, getting out because Veronica sprung him out of there. Then they had sex and who knows what happened after that. Possibly Jeffrey's father. I don't know. And then he said he changed his life around for the better. 
He ended up getting saved, got married, had three boys. Then, unfortunately, his wife passed away about a year ago. So the look in his eyes now could possibly be different from the look of his eyes 10, 15 years ago when he was back in that lifestyle. Meaning that theoretically, I do believe it is possible that Derek's eyes, I know this sounds weird when you think about it, Derek's physical features in terms of the personality and energy he gives off. And I know people are like, Jeremy, stop it, you're reaching. I know it seems that way, but I am convinced. Believe me, believe me. I do think it is possible that if he changed it, then it shows. Kind of like they always say, like, it's not always about how you talk is what you do and how you act because sometimes people can see the God in you and trust and believe I, I haven't, I haven't been like an evil person in my younger life or whatever, but growing up, like even back in like public school, people would just say like, yo man, I can tell like you go to church and whatnot because I can just tell by the way you interact with people and how you carry yourself that, you know, you're a Christian guy. And I'm like, yo, that's pretty cool. And I mean, I never really thought of it much back then, but looking back, it does speak volumes, meaning that, Derek, the way he is now, really does resonate a godly man. Obviously, not that same man when he was um younger. So, I think that it is possible that he had those demons in him at one time, but then changed his life around. And who knows? And if you don't believe me, look at Candace. I mean, the way she came into that house, look at her facial expressions from when she was trying to talk all cordial from going to mama and then she changed to look hannah tell me there ain't no change okay i'm done that's it so i will say this much and i will say this one last time if you don't believe me because you're like you're you're you're, you're reaching this is clickbait this is you just making stuff up that isn't there or you just getting videos for views that's not the point i'm here to prove a point when you really think about it and this goes back to the beginning of season one. Remember in my episode review for, uh, what was that episode? What was it? Afraid of Flames or Searching for a Mother's Love? I think it was the second episode of season five when Benny and Mitch pulled up and um, Melissa was sitting outside the car and Benny saved Veronica from the car before, you know, officially caught fire and she would have died. There was a brief scene between Melissa and Benny talking when nine, um, ambulance and whatnot showed up in the fire department. And those two talk briefly. I'm like, oh my God, those two interacted. I wonder what that means. Like, does it mean they'll actually have a scene together later? And then they branched off into having sexual encounters on multiple occasions. Look at the brief scene between Derek and um, Candace in the last episode. Very brief. You, you're not going to sit here and tell me that doesn't mean that those two are going to interact in the future. Whether it be, it turns out Derek is Candace's father or Derek tries to step in and stop Candace from doing what she's doing to her mother by sending those thugs for the money. I'm just saying, for all we know, there could be plenty of pseudo father-daughter talks between Candace and Derek before it's officially revealed whether or not Derek is Candace's father. On top of that, also think about the fact that, um, hang on, I lost my train of thought there because I got in like preacher mode for a second. When you look at the story of how Hannah is interacting with Candace in terms of not really wanting to believe she's on the path of the straight and narrow because of her past actions. And really there's more merit to what Candace was doing back then than the now, because at this point it's almost like after everything she's doing to her mother, even big Candace fans are disgusted with her. And I talk with them every week, like each week, more and more people hit me. up, like, yo man, I'm done with Candace compared to season two and three, when no matter what she did, they were still fans. And even going back to that episode to talk with Jim, when um, Hannah was talking with Benny, like there has to be something big to happen in her life to change her around like a miracle or something like big in terms of um, pretty much something big enough to catch their attention to say, oh, all right, all right I need to double think the way I'm living. Fast forward a season later when Candace lost her son, that didn't work, which was mentioned in the last episode by Hannah saying that, I thought when you lost your son, that would have been enough to change your life around. Which goes back to Hannah stop stopping her prayers for Candace because she's too far gone, which is, well, it's never too late for people to turn around. But from Hannah's perspective, when you really look at everything she's went through, everything Candace has went through and those two troubled relationship, 
it's understandable why. And that's, and I'm going to be honest here. Like, I think that one of the worst things a parent can say to their child is like, I give up on you. And that means that Candace has really taken things too far. So with that being said, with Hannah having trouble accepting Candace in the present, well, or the future based off her past experiences, do you think Derek could be the key to healing the relationship between Candace and Hannah? Because he is a prime example. And this is uh, once again, hang in there with me now, hang in there with me now, because let's say Derek really is Candace's father. Hannah is falling for the, I don't want to say love, but let me just say that there are feelings. Hey, I care about you. We're close. That kind of thing. Hannah is falling in Derek. Well, yeah, Hannah is falling for the Derek of the present without knowing his full past. Let me say that one more time. Like again, the, those divinity degrees I got are coming in handy right now. Once again, Hannah is falling for the Derek of the present, not the Derek of the past. Now you could argue that's mainly because of the fact that she doesn't know about his past because in recent episodes, it's almost like, Derek is, you know, it's almost like Hansel and Gretel dropping breadcrumbs to, you know, us to pick up, use this evidence. And I mean, heck, people like me, obviously, using that evidence to kind of put the pieces of the puzzle together about who he was in his past life. Let's say that those two fall for each other and stuff like that. Let's not say the word sex due to the fact that we're, I'm just going to put that on the shelf because Hannah is allegedly waiting until she gets married, but I'm not going to lie. It would not surprise me if she ends up giving it up a little bit earlier than that. Let's say she finds out the past about Derek. What do you think she would do? Now, it will be easy to say she's one heck of a hypocritical Christian if she's going to judge Derek based off his past. And ended up liking the Derek now. Derek proven himself to be a person that has changed his ways, become a Christian, got saved, got married, had kids, is a deacon in the church. Yet you're going to look at all of his past life stuff and judge him by that. That's that's one way of judging it, calling her a hypocritical Christian. Number two, it would be easy to understand why Hannah may want to cut all ties. All ties. Sorry, I actually got a message from Derek right now. It would be fun to think about her cutting all ties by looking at Derek's past and saying, I, I, ha I want to have nothing to do with you. If she finds out that he was the man to rape her, meaning that there will probably be viewers out there who have possibly dealt with sexual assault or rape in their past. And it's just like, whoa, 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 whoa. For all those saying that Hannah is hypocritical, you don't know what it's like to be the victim of something like that. So it's understandable why she would just cut all ties with Derek. That's the second option of how that situation might be handled. Number three, the situation of the fact that let's say, for example, if Hannah can fall for Derek in the present and then learn his past, That kind of debunks what she told Benny at the episode, A Talk with Jim. The fact that a person's future actions, the best proof or evidence as to what they're going to do in the future is look at what they've done in the past. So by looking at Derek's past and all the dirty stuff he's allegedly done, Hannah will be dumbfounded because the Derek of the present is nothing like the Derek of the past. And if she learned to fall and love Derek, because of who he is now rather than what he was. Could that possibly mean that she will learn to reconcile with Candace? Now, keep in mind, if you've been following this series from episode one to the present, you will know that despite Hannah being a hypocritical Christian at times, which she has, assuming the worst for Candace. And to be honest, most of the time she is right because, well, aside from being a Christian, she is her mother. She, Hannah has reached out way more times than Candace when trying to reconcile. That's, that's a fact. 
Now, one thing she also told Benny in that car ride from the hotel after talking with Candace, and as an audience, we learned that Candace was molested as a child. She said that if Candace would only use her her like skill set, all the energy she used into robbing and conning people and deceiving them, if she turned that around, she could change this world for the better. And I thought, oh my God, if she's first lady, she will be in a position to do just that. If she changes around for the better, remember, who knows why that will be? Will it be because would it be because she realizes that she has a second chance at life? You know, the fact that um and I hate to use this analogy, but it's kind of like Charles playing the role of Jesus. Come, my child, I'll erase all of your past sins. You'll be washed clean and cleansed and you'll be the first lady giving her a new opportunity at life. And I do feel a bit uncomfortable making that comparison, but really, that's the only way I can look at this angle. It does make sense. And by Hannah, would she accept her as first lady? That's my question. I mean, like, trust and believe in the real world now, it's kind of like people, you know, we don't accept Trump as the president. But let's just talk about the haves and the have nots. Would she would Hannah be able to accept her daughter as the first lady? And then, you know, Candace all of a sudden begins to make all kinds of good decisions to help out people and stuff like that. But what would be that life changing event that would rock her um, foundation and make her want to change? And I do feel like Derek could possibly play a role because once again, if it does turns out, if it does turn out that Derek is her father and the man that raped Hannah, but then Hannah turned around and ends up forgiving Derek because of what happened in the past based off the Derek in the present and hoping for a brighter future. She too can learn that despite Candace's past, that doesn't necessarily guarantee that everything she does in the future will be a result of her past experiences. She will possibly be able to see that and smile that her daughter finally is in a position where she's using all that energy and her skills that she used to con people flip that around to end up helping and changing the world for the better. And she would be in a position in order to do that as first lady mic drop. And no, I'm not dropping this mic because it costs $50. But guys, I feel like it, it is definitely possible that once in the past, Derek had the demons that plague Candace today. And by eventually seeing the light of God go into church and change his life around that evil, cold look in his eyes that Hannah said she would never forget is now gone. That's why Hannah doesn't recognize Derek as the guy with the lion tattoo. And who knows what exactly it will take for those demons to be expelled from Candace. So that look, not just in her eyes, but the way she carries herself and acts, that will be gone. So in a way, father and daughter will, would have gone through the same kind of transformation. So as I said in the beginning of this video, I hope that I didn't deceive anyone. My previous video about confirmed Derek is Candace's father. But thank you um, to um, Sharon on Twitter for reaching out to me with that theory. It makes a lot of sense. And like I said before, before recording this video, I went back and rewatched the episode. So I think I said, what was it? Season three, a talk with Jim and the episode before that, I think it was called In Crisis. That was the episode where Hannah is talking with Candace and Benny in the hotel room about what exactly happened to Candace when she was a girl. And then the next episode to talk with Jim, when Benny and Hannah are driving home from the hotel, and then towards the end of the episode, outside of the house where Benny is trying to convince Hannah to take the car to work, that's when they have those discussions I was talking about in regards to Candace helping the world for the better, why she hasn't changed her ways, Hannah can tell. Go back and rewatch those episodes if you don't believe me. The intel I had came straight from that. But let me know in the comment section below. Do you Are you now convinced that it is very, 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 very likely that Derek is Candace's father? If you have any other theories, let me know in the comment section below. Thank you all so much for hanging in there with me. This video is probably like 30 minutes long. I don't even know how. It probably is. Like I had to break it up into like three audio files because my voice got tired. But I feel like it really is possible. I mean, like I said in my last video, I'm 100% convinced. And then the more evidence, like even today after Renee, uh, Sh Sharon Renee gave me that intel and I went back and watched those episodes. Once again, it just shows that you got to pay attention to the dialogue that Tyler Perry has these characters saying because it might take a couple of seasons to pay off or in our time, a couple of years to pay off. 
and you'll see it happen and it's like wow so i definitely suggest going back on hulu and i still i feel like i need to go back and rewatch episodes i've already rewatched because of the dialogue actually paying off in the present thank you all so much once again subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and hopefully i'll be talking to you all again soon